Good Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos. Welcome to everybody who's just come in. Welcome to those who have come into the Zoom room. Good to see you digitally. Look forward to seeing you in the flesh someday soon, too. And uh, Shabbat is going to have a slightly different flavor tonight for a couple of different reasons. One, because Mando Man is here. Mando Josh was right here as always. <laughs> I love that mandolin. If I could bottle that up and take it around mm -hmm. with me, it would increase my general happiness level. <laughs> so this is giving me great excitement for the day who will be upstairs with room for a full band, maybe having a little Klezmer flavor. Or according to uh, Stu's new request, maybe some jazz Shabbat. Jazz yeah, yeah. Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I attended a jazz Shabbat last Friday in Long Beach, uh -huh. California. It was really fun. Cool. Really fun. We'll have to do that. We have so much talent in this community. And uh, and so grateful that um, Jody and Stu are here um, stepping in. Uh, Dr. C's away this Shabbos and we miss her and wish her well. Um, but in her absence, we have some real ringers. So thank you for being here. And, uh, and that's terrific. You'll also notice some slight changes in the melodies tonight from some of our more traditional tunes, although you hear a lot of the favorites too. And the reason for that is that this has been an important week in the state of Israel, because this is the week of the Israeli high holidays, so to speak, with Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaAtzma'ut, the, uh, the Memorial and Independence Days, which follow one right after the other. And so, and in tribute to um, our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land, we're going to be singing a few more Israeli melodies tonight. So there might be one or two that you don't know, and you might hear one or two that we've brought back from way back long ago. And so thank you for your patience and for trying something new, if in fact it is new. Okay, let's take a moment, since some new friends have come in in the last few minutes, let's reach out to somebody near us, say Shabbat Shalom, offer that greeting perhaps, and then we'll light the candles together. <laughs> I haven't seen my hands. <laughs> 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 
Trying to figure it out, it's Friday. Any hugs not not completed at this time will <laughs> no, still be good. possible later. <laughs> Sorry, that's the Italian blood in me. <laughs> I think that's one area in which there's significant overlap. Mm -hmm. 120 is the page where we light the Shabbat candles, bringing light and joy into our space and into our hearts. And so Jody and Stu are going to lead us in the lighting of the Shabbat candles. Okay. Up one and a half steps.
That's our official religious school drummer, by the way. <laughs> she was not, I believe she was nine. <laughs> All right, so you can play on the next one too if you want. It's a little bit harder though. Now, you're a legit musician, so I know that you know from odd meters. This one is seven. Have you ever played anything in seven, eight? It's like this. That's the song. Now, this is coming back from a long time ago. Okay, stop. So let's teach it because it's a little hard. Right? So we're going to review this song. This is one that we learned actually in the Cantor Boyle days, okay? And we sung it a lot um, last year, but we haven't sung it now since I think the summer or so. So let's start simple, okay? We're on page uh, uh, 132. This is, this is a beautiful selection um, from, yeah, from Psalm 97, which says, light is sown like seeds in a field, which is very appropriate for this time of year as we're between two big agricultural holidays of uh, Pesach and Shavuot. So light is sown for the righteous like seeds in a field and the righteous go and pick up those points of light, make the world a little better place, make something beautiful sprout. That's anyway where the imagery goes for me, maybe for you too, all right? And so it starts very simple. It starts like this. We'll slow it down a little too, right? Good. And now we'll slow it down even more to show you how the main line goes. It goes like this. Zaru alat sadik, zaru alat sadik. Try that. Or zaru alat sadik, zaru alat sadik. Or zaru alat sadik, zaru alat sadik. Or zaru alat sadik. It goes down. Zaru alat sadik. Again. Or zaru alat sadik, zaru alat sadik. Good, and the second and only other part is Slow that part down a little bit more for first timers. So the words ule yishre lev. Try those words. Ule yishre lev simcha. Simcha. That means that um, those who pick up those points of light are upright people and have joyful hearts. Okay. So ule yishre lev simcha. Ule yishre lev simcha. You build up the chord a little bit. I can't even know if it sounds good to you. We won't judge you. Let's 
All right. Who has loosened up, lightened up, let something go a little bit since they first came in? I hope all of us a little bit. <laughs> That's what this is for. All right. And so now we arrive at this moment where Shabbat feels real in this space, in addition to just, you know, an idea out there that we know we come back to. So in the Di, we actually rise at the end of the psalm to welcome Shabbat. We greet Shabbat as though a guest, a beloved friend coming back in. Um, and so we'll turn to the entrance of our space at the end of the psalm. And uh, we'll do this one in E minor, I think, for the collective keys. It's a little low for me, but it should be good for you guys. Page 138. <laughs> Thank you. 
So good to sing together. We've arrived at Ma'ariv. The main body of our evening service begins on page 146. We stay standing for the Baruch Hu. 
days with a blessing for the evening. Would you say it together in English? Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are a creator of day and night, throwing light away from darkness and darkness from light transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Sivahot is your name. Ever living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings us on the evening. Baruch Hatah Adonai, Amarim Haradim. We have the most blessing, the most beautiful blessing for Torah on the next page, 150. Where Torah is given through the metaphor and reality of love. All you need is love. That's right. We had that before the Beatles. It was the Torah. Oh, 
Israel Adonai translation on page 156 in English. Ready volunteer? Yes. We got one. Oh, we got one. All this we hold to be true and trustworthy for us. You alone are our God, and we are Israel, your people. You are our sovereign and our savior, who delivers us from oppression's hands and saves us from tyrant's fists. You work wonders without number, marvels beyond count. You give us light and steady our footsteps. You perform miracles for us before Pharaoh, signs and wonders in the land of the Egyptians. You led your people Israel out from their midst to freedom for all time. When your children witness your dominance, they praise your name in gratitude. When they accepted your sovereignty, Moses, Miriam, and all Israel sang to you together. Lifting their voices joyously. And that joyous song is on page 158. Page 158. <laughs> Adonai, 
160. For restful sleep and safety in the night. Well, as part of our RAC work, our Religious Activities Committee, Stu has been fearlessly guiding us through TBT Book Club, reading a, a great book by um, Reb Zalman Shakhtar Shalom, who is the great luminary and pioneer of the renewal movement of Judaism. And if you want to know what the renewal movement is, I'm happy to talk to you about it afterwards. Um, and and what, he, what he says about Shabbat is, I think, very interesting. I've been thinking about it a lot. He says, why do we call the items that are prohibited for Shabbat practice traditionally the milachot? Milachot is a word that means work. Why do we, uh, why do we say we don't do those 39 categories of work on Shabbat? You know, anybody ever have a bubby who wouldn't pre-tear the toilet paper? <laughs> Your mother? Okay. So that's sort of the stuff that we're talking about. Right? What, what are those work items that are to do with our Shabbat prohibitions and what do they really have to do with our lives? And I think he has a really beautiful way of framing it in a more modern sense. And what he says is that the word milacha, which in Hebrew is the word for the work prohibition, um, it actually comes from a Hebrew root, which means sending. Okay, it's from, it's from the same word as malach. Anybody know what a malach is? Who's not a rabbi? <laughs> a malach is an angel. Yeah. So a malach is an angel. It's somebody who is sent to do a task, who, who has a mission. And so what Rav Zalman says is that for him, one way to conceive of the things in our lives that we want to remove for Shabbat is what are the things that we wish to delegate? What are the things that are so of the week and of the tasks that we must accomplish that if we were only focused on those tasks, we would forget to stop and enjoy the beauty in the world all around us, the spiritual potential of rest and connection and elevation of our lives that Shabbat can give us. So he says, the things that I would send somebody else to do, whether it's uh, to mail a package or to mow my lawn um, or whatever, those are things that I cut out of my life, that I cut out of my practice just for Shabbat to help Shabbat feel elevated. Not necessarily because he or we should be worried that there's some sort of divine punishment, God forbid, for doing those things if we did want to do them. And the other piece of it is that it could vary from person to person, right? Like maybe um, I'm not very good with needle craft and sewing and crocheting were never my things. That is one of those things that traditionally is prohibited. It's one of the 39 categories of Milchot on Shabbat. But some people who are really really needle crafty people for whom it brings them joy and maybe even a meditative state and perhaps who like to knit for people they love. That is an activity that can be framed as a beautiful thing to do on Shabbat. So this way of, this way of framing Shabbat is I think very liberating for us as modern Jews because it helps us 
to, to, to really ask the spiritual question of what is the thing that I am doing, doing for me, for my family, and for God. It also, though, I think places a larger onus of responsibility on the modern Jew, because we don't get to just look up the answer of 39 categories in a book that tells us what we can and can't do. So it both asks more of us and gives us more freedom, which is sort of the nature of Shabbat's freedoms, I think. So maybe one thing we can meditate on in the Amidah or throughout the rest of the service are what, what, are, what is one of those things or two of those things that we just have been meaning to cut out on Shabbat, that we just need to get away, whether it involves a screen or a task or a job, but it can wait until Sunday. It really can, I promise. So let it, let it do that. So I have a question. Yes. Not knowing Hebrew very well, in Israel, in, on your email, instead of hitting send, does it actually say malach? I, it says shlach, I think, oh. which is which is another word because that means that, that send. That is one thing that we try to cut out is sending emails. That's that's a good one. That yeah. would be a good tie-in, and it's an excellent point. Yeah, the word the word malach is a little it's a little highfalutin oh. for modern okay. everyday usage. Yeah, yeah, good question though. All right, well, let's continue then with the Amidah. We'll begin together, and then we'll take a moment. Silent prayer. Starts on page 164. Adonai sepatai titahu fiyagi tehilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei avoteinu, Vimoteinu, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rita, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor ve'hanorah, el el yon, gomel ha'sadim tovim, ve'konei ha'kor, ve'zoher ha'seavot ve'imahot, u'ebiyula ve'nehem, le'mashimo ya'avah, melech ozer u'moshiyah u'magim, baruch atah Adonai, Magi Avraham, Bezrat Sarah, Atagi Boyle Amadonai, Mikhaye Akol Atarab Lehoshia, Mori Ataha, Mikhaye Harim Behezel, Mikhaye Akol Berachamim Rabi, Tomech Rokli Berofech Oli, Umatir Asuri, Umekaye Munato, Nishene Afa, Rihamo Baba Giburos, Umido Mela, Melechlimi, Umekaye, Umas Miyah Yeshua, Venemanata Rakayo Tako. Baruch atah Adonai, Elohei ha'adoh. Ata kadosh v'shimcha kadosh, u'kadoshim v'chol yom yahalu ha'sela. Baruch atah Adonai, Elohei ha'adoh. Continue with a moment of silent prayer. Please take that moment and... Uh, Feel free to have a seat when you're ready, but not a moment before then.
Passing around the uh, words of the new Misha Beirach melody that we have been singing over the last month or so. And this is an our opportunity to offer prayers of healing. We all know someone who needs them. We might ourselves need them. And this is our opportunity to affirm as a community that all who are in need are also in thought in our hearts and in our prayers. So I'll share those who we know, include our temple members, April Diamato, Norma Diamond. Ann Karamanis, Josh Lipschitz, Ken Gammerman, Hattie Sussman, Mark Warner, and Eric Manis, and also our loved ones, Barak Yaakov ben Avram Sara, Tamar Bat Rachel, Rav Chaim ben Leah, Kani Ambazino, Mickey Bart, Jay Fliss, Michelle Rusinko, Joanne Casulo, Jack Dock, Bart Young, Mark Ostreicher, Matthew Pincus, Soraya Casey, Brian Caymans, Steve Caymans, Cecilia Byrne, Marvin Goldberg, John Van Steenbergen, Monica Caposiello, Faye Young, Paul Frisman, Bruce Petroff, Raymond Wolf, Tim Weeder, Tim Maurer, Gloria Newell, Sabin Meyer, Carol Chaikin, Adrian Wasserman, Sherry Cohn, Joan Sidney, Trevor Jones, Peter David, Kevin Susi, Emily Berry, Drew Garabo, Davis Chamberlain, Maureen Victor, Palma Posey, and if there are others who we should add to our prayers, feel free to uh, share their names at this time if you wish, either here or on Zoom if you are joining us remotely. Anybody else praying for somebody from Misha Bear off tonight? Mark Long, Mark Long, and Bill Collins. Any others from Misha Bear off? We think also of Carol Robb and Pat and Al Missouri. We should know speedy healing and peace. <laughs> Bless our 
us as well. Bless us with the power of your healing. Bless us with the power of your hope. May our lives be filled with understanding and strengthened by the power of your love. I finally took the plunge this week. I started playing around with chat GPT. Oh, did Yikes. you write your sermon? <laughs> <laughs> this, this sermon was not written by chat GPT. Although you're going to hear that I will quote chat GPT. Oh, down the rabbit hole we go. It got really interesting really quickly. Has anybody actually started exploring chat GPT yet? Yeah, a little bit. Well, I started out by asking it about some philosophical questions, some math stuff, things that I was generally aware of, um, but I wanted it, I just wanted to see what it would do to try to like, you know, explain the essence of differential calculus as though speaking to a, an eight-year-old. Um, and it actually did a remarkable job at some of these things. It could do some pretty cool stuff. Um, I, eventually I started asking it, about Jewish stuff, which it did some really, really impressive responses to. I asked it about Jewish history and the Jewish denominations. And um, I did things like uh, answer a tough philosophical question from the point of view of a reform conservative or Haredi rabbi, which actually, it was pretty shy. I mean, I don't know if I'm quite out of a job yet, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see, okay? And eventually what I did was, I was curious to do some sort of comparative comparative literature traditions, if you will. So what as I, I did is I asked it about Plato's parable of the cave. Have you heard about the parable of the cave? Those of you who have seen The Matrix, which is, of course, the great Keanu Reeves movie from the early aughts, have encountered the parable of the cave in a really cool modern way, even if you didn't know it. Basically, here's what the parable of the cave says. Plato says that imagine there is um, a cave in which prisoners are shackled to the wall. And they can't turn around to see the entrance of the cave. All they can do for their entire lives is look straight ahead of them at the wall. Now behind them, there's a fire. And what the fire does is it reflects the shadows onto the wall like a projector. Imagine an ancient projector. 
So everything that passes by, whether it's merchants or people or animals or whatever, gets projected in shadow. And all they can see is the shadow every day for their entire lives. And so what do they think? They think that the shadows that they see are all that exists. For them, the shadows are their experience of reality, such as it is. Okay, with me so far? So one day, imagine that a prisoner gets loose. And all of a sudden, he goes out of the cave. He's blinded by the incredible brightness of the world. And he sees the real things, the real animals and human beings and natural phenomena that were causing these shadows and making the sounds and all of this, all of the rest. And his eyes are open, of course, in a brand new way. He understands that the reality that he thought was the reality was no longer the actual reality. In fact, the world is completely other. So what does he do? He runs back into the cave and he taps all of his buddies on the shoulder. And he says, you guys, all of us have been deceived. This is not what reality, this is not what the world looks like at all. Let me explain to you what a tree actually is. It's going to blow your mind. Okay. But and you know how they respond? They don't believe him. Because once you're out, you can never really go back in. And if you're still in, you can never really appreciate that which you cannot see. So of course, this is a, this is a story that, that illustrates how, that reality can be subjective. And it, and it encourages us to ask big questions about our senses and how much we can rely on them. According to Plato, we are all prisoners in this cave, having only the faintest glimmer of reality. So just chew on that one for a while. <laughs> anyway, I thought, what if I asked chat GPT, is there anything like Plato's parable of the cave in the Talmud? Is there anything like that in Judaism? Now, as it happens, I have some ideas about this already. So I'm just curious to see what it would say. And by the way, this is not the point of the sermon. So maybe I'll give that sermon another time if you're interested. Or if it's your bar bar mitzvah one day, you can actually ask me that question and I'll respond to it on the beat. But that's aside. Okay, so you want to know what ChatGPT had to say? Are you interested? All right. Here's what it says. It said, there is a story from the Midrash about an elephant that also addresses the relationship between perception, reality, and the limitation of the senses. It's very eloquent, isn't it? This story is found in the Midrash called Ecclesiastes Rabbah, which is a real collection of Midrash. And it says that's a collection of Midrashim compiled in the seventh century CE. Okay, so far so good. Have you all heard this story? Probably. According to in this, I'm still quoting ChatGPT. According to the Midrash, a group of blind people encounter an elephant for the first time. Each of the blind people touches a different part of the elephant's body and describes what they perceive. One person touches the elephant's trunk and says it is like a snake. Another touches the elephant's leg and says it's like a, what do you think? What do you think, kids? It says it's like a tree, like a tree trunk or something. Right? Another touches the elephant's ear and says it's like a fan and so on and so forth. When they begin to argue about what the elephant really looks like, a sighted person explains to them that they are all partially correct, but none of them has a complete understanding of what an elephant really is. The sighted person explains that the elephant is made up of all of those parts and that the blind people need to work together to understand the true nature of the elephant. So that's what ChatGPT suggested as a Jewish equivalent, and it even gave a source for the story from the Midrash, right? All right. What do you think? Did ChatGPT do a good job of connecting, of connecting the Plato story to a Jewish story? Pretty good? Yeah, reasonably. reasonably? Yeah. At least enough so that you could do some compare contrast in the same universe. So does this story actually exist in the Midrash? In that oh, way? now you're too smart. You're too smart. You're smarter <laughs> than ChatGPT. Like children's uh, yeah. fable. Well, so, okay, so here's what happened. Oh, sorry. Do you want to also hear like what the moral of the story was from ChatGPT? Here's what it says. The Midrash uses this story to illustrate the limitations of the senses and the importance of working together to gain a fuller understanding of the world. It suggests that perception is subjective and that reality is often much more complex than we initially perceive it to be. In this way, the story teaches a lesson about the importance of humility and the dangers of thinking that we have a complete understanding of the world around us. Pretty good sermon, right? Thanks, ChatGPT. Okay, so I was really excited I was really excited to find the source in the Midrash because I wanted this to be true. I wanted to make my own sermon around it. I wanted to talk about how impressed I was with ChatGPT. 
Except, you know what happens? I kept on looking for the source of this Midrash. I scoured the internet. I scoured Safaria, which is some of us know is a great source of, of many of the rabbinic texts of Jewish tradition. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find what it was talking about. I even, I even asked some specific questions. I said, um, chat GPT, can you give me the original Hebrew? Can you give me, give me the Hebrew so I can find the text myself? And it gave me the whole thing in Hebrew. <laughs> but you know what? It was in modern Hebrew, like Israelis would speak. It was in the sort of language of like that you would see in a children's book, which I'm sure there is a children's book with this in it in Israel. And then I said, okay, so then I kept going. I like didn't let ChatGPT off the hook. I said, ChatGPT, you've given me a great modern Hebrew translation of the Midrash that you told me is from Ecclesiastes <clears throat> Rabbah, the Midrash collection. Could you please provide the original text in the Tanaitic Hebrew from the original source material? And so you know what it said? I know. <laughs> it said it said no problem and then it gave me the same thing i said then you know what i said at this point after asking a few more times i said chat gpt is what you told me true chat gp i'm serious this is what i said i said chat gpt is this actually from the midrash like you told me and you know what it said i don't know it said it seems that I have made a mistake. <laughs> the story that I told you is a common folk tale which appears in different versions across many folk traditions throughout the world. It is not in the Midrash. Just like, let that sit with you for a second. And this is not the craziest thing that happened that night. I'm going to share some more sermons about other chat GPT experiences. Why should chat GPT be any different than any other, like, you know, person on television right now? <laughs> yes, yes. No, it's just, just we only recently learned that chat GPT was originally named George Santos. It's much too smart for GPT. I have to say though that it, this is both this was both an amazing evening of my of my of my experience and also a really scary one mm -hmm. because can you imagine all of the students who do research and and you see you've done your work right like you see I have a text it's a great compelling story it has a source that is verifiable it's a real Jewish text you could even come up and ask the rabbi rabbi is this a real thing and I say yeah that's a real source but if you don't actually take the time to track down the source and see it for yourself in a book or in a trustworthy peer reviewed location online, anything that ChatGPT says, regardless of how sophisticated, could be completely wrong, completely wrong. And in that respect, it is both more sophisticated than anything else I have ever seen on the internet, but also exactly like everything else <laughs> on the internet. This was a really big moment of caution mm -hmm. for me because it's fun to play with. Oh man, if you're a curious person, mm -hmm. it is super fun to play with. Mm -hmm. But you've got to realize that not only does it not know everything, but it can lie <laughs> and it can make mistakes. All right, I'm running out of time. I'm going to share. So within the next couple of weeks, I'm going to share some more stories of my various hijinks and why I think that there are reasons we should be even more concerned than this particular story illustrates. But let's just say that when it comes to ChatGPT, there is an elephant in the room, so to speak, right? There is truly an elephant in the room. And isn't it kind of only almost poetic justice that in a question that was all about finding truth and the subjectivity of experience, that it actually pulled the wool over my eyes and kept on telling me it was telling me the truth until I begged it, it enough tried. to tell me the truth. It tried. It tried. It didn't actually. It, it tried what? <laughs> to pull the wool over your eyes. Yeah, it, well, it, it, it tried. It tried. Yeah. But this is this is something that, and I'll, I'll have more to say about this again in the next few weeks, but I, there, I had a conversation with a couple of congregants about this this week. And one of them said, you know, Rabbi, I really think it's just like Wikipedia. Remember when Wikipedia yeah, came out and everything was, oh my gosh, this is going to completely destroy the, the, the credibility of any research. All the kids are just going to go to Wikipedia. They're never going to learn what a primary and secondary source is. They're going to never do any work. And by the way, it's going to be completely unreliable. Well, that's not exactly what happened. 
But I, let me just make this my first sort of line in the sand to say, and you could please tell me after the service what you think. I think that this sort of technology is far more dangerous and far scarier than any other paradigm shifting technology that has existed in any of our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's worthy of talking about and thinking about and doing research about. Because I really think that if we're, I mean, I don't think we're at like, come with me if you want to live. I don't think we're like at that, <laughs> at that point right now. Thank you to all of our 80s babies. <laughs> we're, not, we're not quite that far, but it is easier to see how we get from here to there than ever before. So it's worth us being careful. Thank you, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Conversation to be continued. All right, so we have a couple of special rituals to end the service, one of which is we count the Omer. This is a custom between Passover and Shavuot to count each day, just like the ancient farmers in our heritage would see the grain ripening on the vine. We count the days looking forward to Shavuot, the reading of the Torah, standing again at Mount Sinai, and delicious dairy desserts, which I know you're very excited about too. That's in just a few weeks, believe it or not. So I invite us to please stand up. Uh, we are on page 570. Okay. And uh, today we are counting the day after day 22, the day after day 22. Now, the Hasidic masters say that we're supposed to notice our traits and how we can make a little course correction to grow and develop in a certain direction. So perhaps if you haven't taken on this practice during the Omer, each week, we can look back at the week and uh, think about where we did well and maybe where our personal traits could use a little touch up. All right, page 570. I'm ready to fulfill the mitzvah of counting the Omer. We could say the blessing together. Baruch Shehem Shlosha Shavuot Ushnei Yamim La Omer. Today is the 23rd day of the counting of the Omer, which is equivalent to three weeks and two days in the counting of the Omer, which means that um, we are getting really close to the halfway point and really close to a beautiful and exciting month of May here at TBT, which we're going to hear more about in the announcements um, later. Okay, so we'll turn to now page 586. Thank you for joining in that. And uh, we'll sing Aleinu L'Shaberach. Aleinu L'Shaberach L'Adon HaKol L'Atet Yula Yotzer Breshit Shelo Asanu Kire Aratzon Velo Samalu Kimishpachot Adama Shelo Sam Chalkenu Kahel Lego Horanenu Mecho Hamoran Anachnu Korim Umishtachavim Umodim Lifne Merat Mache Hamlachim HaKadosh Baruch Hu Page 591 you can all have a seat, and Stu has some reading for us on behalf of our board. Shalom, everybody. <clears throat> More welcome to all of our guests here with us tonight. My name is Stu Weinzimmer. I am the chair of the Religious Activities Committee. Please join us tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for Torah study led by Rabbi Moss. The Zoom link is in your inbox. And tomorrow night, uh, Have Reem, our newly renamed men's club, will be hosting a whiskey tasting. Um, and uh, there should be some information in your inbox. Uh, if you haven't uh, RSVP'd, but you'd like to, uh, you could come see me afterwards and um, I will give you the deets. 
I did say that, yes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was MLS. <laughs> Torah Tots is back this weekend. Bring your children, age two to five, to TBT from 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning for snacks, stories, crafts, and play. Please mark your calendar for TBT's annual meeting on the evening of Wednesday, May 17th. Now, all these other special May Shabbat happenings that the rabbi was mentioning include high school graduation Shabbat on May 12th, um, honoring our teachers on May 19th, and confirmation on Shavuot, May 26th. And we look forward to seeing you again next weekend as we celebrate the Bat Mitzvah of Simona Katril. And again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. So we'll see you probably in the same place next week down here, but then for every Friday and Saturday service moving forward, we're uh, hoping to move upstairs. Yeah. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. The acoustics big... in that room mm -hmm. are amazing. <clears throat> yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And we will fill it with our voices with beautiful, beautiful songs. <clears throat> so we'll now enter into the space of memory as we honor those in our community's family and in all of our lives who may have loved and lost. I'm going to share the names of our, um, our yard site remembrances. So if you are here to observe a yard site, I invite you to please rise if you're comfortable doing so and stay standing. So tonight we remember Lewis Gordon, Erwin Savodnik, Aaron Temler, Melville Levy, Alice Chorney, Marilyn Gordon, Patricia McCrary Smith, Mally San Marco, Harold Simon, Fanny Singer, Bernice Templeman, Selma Traeger, Alan Belgard, and Elda May Romine. Is there anybody else in our community who is here to say Kaddish tonight? We'd like to share the name of your loved one, whether in person or on Zoom. Feel free to share their name if you wish. Invite us to please rise together then. We're on page 598 to share these hallowed words and to share a space of memory together. Yitgadal v'yikadash shemei raba v'yalma divrach yurutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chayi dechol beit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman karif v'yimru amen v'yei shemei raba m'varach le'olam v'yomei almaya yitvarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitramam v'yitnasei v'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal shemei dekudisha v'yitru Ve'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tushvechata v'nechamata, da'amiran v'alma v'imru, amen. Ve'he shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'alcho Yisrael v'imru, amen. Oseh shalom v'imrama, v'uya aseh shalom, aleinu v'alcho Yisrael v'imru, amen. The source of peace, bring peace and comfort to the hearts of all who are bereaved this evening. As together we say, Amen. 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 I'll have a seat, friends. Make kiddush together. Uh, do any of our pre-bnei mitzvah kids who are in the room want to come up and get first dibs at some challah? Make kiddush and challah. Don't worry, you're not going to have to sing alone. Anything else you want to come up? You want to? Yeah. Sure. Okay, you can have your challah from over there. Just as long as you come up one of these. All right. We're on page 123. One, two, three. Hey. 
Be shy. Uh, you feel like the aliens go rah, right to the middle. Ellie likes the inside. Besides, so if yeah. you want to grab another chunk of the inside, go right. You say, you say, just like Ellie, and you say she used to just run nonstop back and forth. And I can't believe this is our sweet and gentle and tame <laughs> Ellie who used to be that way. So um, and we're very excited to celebrate Ellie and all of her classmates and very sad to bid farewell to our truly special class yeah. of seniors uh, in just a couple of weeks. So that they're going to be some. Very few dry eyes, I think, at that service in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. They're all actually, uh, well, not all of them, but many of them are um, up in Hartford at BBYO. Um, and uh, they had a senior night last night. And, uh, oh, that's so special. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I heard that we have a big group from BBYO mm -hmm. uh, going to BBYO this, this uh, what do they call it, conference or? Uh, Kala. Kala. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, um, in honor of Israel, we are singing another Israeli closing song. So page 652, Bashana Haba'ah. I love this song because it maintains that sense of Jewish optimism and hope and, and, and faith in the simple things. Let's learn the chorus together. It means just wait and see how good the next year can be. And here's how it sounds. Oti re, oti re, nama tobie, bashana, bashana, haba. Oti re, oti re, nama tobie, bashana, bashana, haba. Bashana. Oh, uh -huh. 
everybody some joy and some rest this Shabbos. Thank you so much to our special guest leaders and have a have a wonderful relaxing Shabbat. And if you use chat GPT, please check your sources. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>